Okay, so let's look at some inflammatory cells. All right, so the fl inflammatory cells of interest that we'll focus the majority of our time on throughout the semester are neutrophils, lymphocytes, eosinophils, and macrophages. So the lymphocytes, as you notice, can be broken down into plasma cells and MOT cells, so as well as lymphocytes themselves. They just have different variations. And then macrophages can also look like monocytes. Um, so monocytes are the blood version, macrophages are when they leave the peripheral bloodstream and move into the body tissue. So neutrophils, um, <laughs> if you watch the other PowerPoint, or perhaps it's this one, never mind. <laughs> Neutrophils can vary in their shape, size, and look as compared to peripheral blood. So when they're happy, healthy, just floating around in tissue, then they look exactly the same as they do in the blood, and there aren't any changes. If they are sick, or if they are wounded, or battling, then they start to look completely oddly different than they would in the peripheral bloodstream. So they can be extremely mind-boggling when you're getting to know them. So just pra know that practice makes perfect, and it takes a while to be able to recognize degenerative neutrophils, or degenerate neutrophils. So the function, uh, neutrophils, I'm sure you... Geez. I'm sure you know by now they are the first line of defense to kick out foreign invaders. So they seek out and destroy, they phagocytize foreign invaders. They can survive one to four days in tissues before being destroyed or dying naturally. They do not have a capacity for long-term battle. So they do their job and then they die within one to four days once they're outside of the bloodstream. Assessing the age and the number of neutrophils indicates the body's response to the infection. So here's a neutrophil, kind of looks like a hyper, well, almost hypersegmented neutrophil. It's not terribly abnormal from your regular peripheral blood. Actually, it is exactly like peripheral blood. And then this is also a neutrophil undergoing various stages of degeneration. And these are neutrophils as well, undergoing degeneration. And this bad boy is a neutrophil undergoing severe degeneration, so much so that its entire nucleus has shifted to one side. It can be fairly mind-blowing when you're learning about them to start off with, so don't get overwhelmed. Just take your time, look at lots of slides, and we'll get used to looking at degenerative neutrophils. Lymphocytes. They can be seen small, medium, and large. We have reactive lymphocytes as well in inflammation. And then we also have plasma cells that are lymphocytes that have transformed when meeting an antigen to release antibodies. So plasma cells are the immune, um, immune response to foreign invaders. So a lot of, well, we'll talk about these in detail as we go along too in regard to types of inflammation. But plasma cells just relate them to immune response. MOT cells, likewise, immune response. So they're plasma cells that are carrying immunoglobulin globules or vesicles for release. So looking at that, happy normal lymphocyte, same as peripheral blood. And then we have a large lymphocyte here, and then a medium to small lymphocyte, a uh, medium lymphocyte, and then a small lymphocyte. And then we have these bad boys, and this is a plasma cell. So the plasma cell has more cytoplasm than the lymphocyte. Nice round purple nucleus, like everything in life. And it has this perinuclear clearing, okay? Perinuclear clearing. So it has a little area of clear in its nucleus. So these are all happy little plasma cells. They've got that little perinuclear clearing. And then this is a MOT cell. So a MOT cell has those, it has little bubbles all over it. So it's this, it is a plasma cell, and it's covered with immune globulin, immunoglobulin globules, so little bubbles that it releases. And those little bubbles on the MOT cells are called Russell bodies. Kind of like Kurt Russell, if you remember him from the 90s classic Captain Ron, which most of you probably never saw. <laughs> and then I was Googling, and I found this cat named... Captain Ron, so I thought that was a pretty good tribute. So just going back, Russell bodies are on MOT cells, and MOT cells are plasma cells with immunoglobulin globules. 
called Russell Bodies. Captain Ron. Eosinophils, they look the same as they appear in the blood, even when they're in inflammation. Phew, finally, something. So they don't undergo a lot of change, which is fabulous, and same thing as they are in the bloodstream, often in regard to allergic or parasitic response. There's a happy little eosinophil. Okay, looks the same as they do in blood. Macrophages. So macrophages can take on many different appearances, often more round-shaped. I say that, but that's not really true. It's really hit and miss. They tend to be round-shaped, but like giant round shape or round oval or slightly square round shape. So they really take on a whole bunch of different appearances. They're pretty gigantic compared to most other white blood cells. However, sometimes they're exactly the same size as a monocyte. And sometimes they're exactly the same size as a neutrophil. So sometimes they look nothing like what I'm going to tell you about. So they have a moderate amount of cytoplasm, typically, and this cytoplasm is most often basophilic, so it takes on a purple appearance. That's one way I like to use to describe the, or to identify them against other cells. And the nucleus usually is oval or slightly pleomorphic. <clears throat> the chromatin is typically lacy to condensed. That's pretty variable. And they often do have vacuoles, so I'll give them that much. They often do have vacuoles. You might see them phagocytizing cells, material, or debris, and they might be multinucleated or gigantic and multinucleated, which is kind of neat. So their function is the same function as a monocyte in the bloodstream. They're mature monocytes that have popped out of the bloodstream and gone into the tissue and stayed in the, fish, in the tissue. Their main role in life, their calling, is to phagocytize foreign invaders or dying dead cells. They're much slower moving than neutrophils, so they're not the first line of defense, but they can, quote, live longer, and therefore they can work longer. So they come out after the neutrophils have already been there, most typically. There's always exceptions to this. You might see epithelioid cells, which are gigantic macrophages that are macrophages specific to the skin. And you might see giant cells as well. So here is a beautiful macrophage. Now, not to blow your mind too much, but these are lymphocytes, okay, small lymphocytes, plasma cell, there's that perinuclear clearing, that lighter area around the nucleus, okay, and then a macrophage, that's probably a macrophage too, and then these are stretched out, so it's hard to tell, lots of squished cells. Okay, but you can see that one has sort of lacy chromatin, it's gappy, and then a nice lacy, lacy evacuated cytoplasm. This is a macrophage as well. Now, this one's interesting. This is a macrophage that's specific to the respiratory system, and truly it's a macrophage that you'd see this sort of shape and size when it's in mucus. Okay, so this is a macrophage of mucus. Here is a neutrophil. And this little doozy, I'll point it out now because we're going to come back to it again. This is called a ciliated columnar epithelial cell. So round purple nucleus, like everything in life, and then it has a long cytoplasm with these little fingers, these little hairs at the end. So that is specific to the respiratory tract. We're not really talking about it now. I just wanted to point it out because this picture will come back in tests and quizzes. So neutrophils, 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 and then, or actually this, it's hard to tell with this picture if those are eosinophils. The pigment's really awkward, but those two are definitely neutrophils, and then those are potentially eosinophils based on what the coloration actually is. And then a giant macrophage. Okay, beautiful giant macrophage. Now, macrophages have different names because we can't keep it, you know, too simple. In cytology, everything has to have different names, has to have different shapes. So each name is specific to the tissue where the cell is working. Some of these alter egos you might come across include histiocytes, mesangial cell, Kupfer cell, and epithelioid cell. And they all have their respective places of origin and respective sort of hangouts. So histiocytes are macrophages of connective tissue. Mesangial cells are macrophages of the kidney. Kupfer cells are those of the liver. And epithelioid are collecting around for material throughout the body. There's another macrophage. And here's a giant inflammatory cell, so an epithelioid type cell called a macro. It's a giant macrophage, essentially. All right, so now other cells that you might come across in an inflammatory sample.
They're not inflammatory cells, but they can be found in some inflammatory samples. Mesothelial cells. Mesothelial cells are one of my favorite cells. I think they're super cool. They're really pretty. They're fairly round with, guess what, a round purple nucleus. They can be multinucleated. The thing that differentiates them the most from macrophages, because sometimes they can also be evacuated, which is really hard to tell the difference, but the thing that tells them apart is that they have this weird either fringe or fuzzy or dripping border. It's really unique, and it only is found in mesothelial cells. Uh, well, as far as I know, it's only found in mesothelial cells. But that compared to macrophages, it's found in the mesothelial cells. And mesothelial cells are actually little cells that belong in the lining. So the pleural lining, the um, um, peritoneal lining, and the pericardial lining. So they're little cells of the lining of the tissue of the abdominal cavity, pericardial cavity, and thoracic cavity. They might be found in clusters. They're hard to tell from macrophages when they are activated. And just to put a little, I, I don't know if this would spark your memory or anything, but if you ever used to watch American TV, probably 10 years ago or so, there used to be a lot of ads on TV for lawyers. If you have mesothelioma, if you are exposed to asbestos, um, then call us. So mesothelioma, putting it together, that's the cancer of mesothelial cells. So again, breathing in asbestos, it increases your chances of getting mesothelioma. So abnormal changes in cell division for mesothelial cells. So this is that fuzzy border of a mesothelial cell. Those two are mesothelial cells. And they often touch and sometimes actually join together, which is really neat. So this is an example. This is a mesothelial cell. This is a mesothelial cell. See how this one sort of has a spiky, drippy border? These ones just have a dark line along the border. But the dead giveaway with these two, that they're mesothelial cells, is that they it, it almost looks like two fried eggs touching together. They actually, their cytoplasm seems to split down the middle, and they almost seem to share one specific cytoplasm. So it's kind of neat. I know that this is a bit of a fuzzy image. This is also a drippy border to a mesothelial cell. And I have some slides that we'll, we'll look at with mesothelial cells. This is a really great one. This is perfect drippy border. And you can see it has that extra lining around the border that macrophages don't have. But again, it's vacuolated. It's basophilic, has a round purple nucleus. So it could be mistaken for a macrophage, but you have to really look at the border. Over here, uh, that's our macrophage. Mm, but it's not a very good example because its border's wavy. But this one has a particular drip to the border. Red blood cells. So they could be part of the inflammatory response. They could be part of an artifact of collection. Erythrophagocytosis is a good indicator of the length of time the blood has been present. Although it can also happen in the tube if the sample is sitting for too long. So just remember... We were talking about this in regard to sample collection and preparation. If you get a lot of blood in your fine needle biopsy, you want to stop, take a new sample, because you'll end up with hemodilution, so a dilution of red blood cells in your sample. This is erythrophagocytosis, where the macrophage is eating these little red blood cells. If a macrophage is eating a white blood cell, it's called hemophagocytosis. <laughs> So just some practice slides. So just do these on your own, I suppose. Well, we can go through them, that's fine. So here we have multinucleated macrophage. We have medium lymphocytes, small lymphocytes, medium lymphocyte, and this is a MOT cell. Okay, happy little MOT cell. Here we've got lots of rod bacteria and a macrophage and red blood cells. Okay, these guys, remember the perinuclear clearing, perinuclear clearing, these are plasma cells. And then we have neutrophils, red blood cells, and a lymphocyte. These are happy little plasma cells. They always remind me of a person with really big hair. Like that's their head, and then they have a beautiful afro on top. I love it. So these are little plasma cells. 
And then here you've got erythrophagocytosis, hemophagocytosis, another MOT cell. And the dead giveaway, just a heads up, sometimes macrophages with excessive amounts of vacuoles can look like MOT cells, but they're not, obviously, they're not. With MOT cells, you'll never see a random MOT cell in the middle of, say, a purulent inflammation or granulomatous inflammation. You'll always see it with its comrade, um, with its friends, <laughs> with its homies, the lymphocytes. Okay, you don't often just, well, you never really see just a plain old MOT cell by itself with a ton of macrophages. They always tend to have plasma cells and or lymphocytes around with them. That's just a close-up of some lymphocytes. Okay, and that's it.